Is it an explanation of how to use the FTIR with the Smart Orbit Diamond ATR cell? Um, changing of the Diamond ATR cell in, if it's not in there, will be covered in an, another procedure. So when you come to the instrument, it should already be set up with the Smart Orbit in place. And the first thing you should check is whether the detector is cool. So you can take out the cap, and if there's frost on the cap, then the detector is cool. But if it's not, then you need to add liquid nitrogen. And you can use a funnel, this funnel to add liquid nitrogen. And what you would do is slowly add liquid nitrogen until it comes out at the bottom of the styrofoam holder down there. In this case, it's already full, so we don't need to add any more. Next thing you can do is come over to the software and start the software, which is called Omnic. You should be able to start it by just double clicking on the Omnic icon. And it'll bring up a screen saying stage initialization. That means that it's trying to recognize which accessory is loaded into the instrument. So it should recognize that the smart orbit is loaded. And then it should show up this screen and it should say smart orbit here. The first thing you want to do here is go to collect and experiment setup. And you can come over to this diagnostic tab. And you should see a signal. And one thing you can do, which I'm not going to do right now, is you can click align and it will automatically align the optics for maximum signal. Another thing you can do if the instrument is behaving oddly is you can click on res reset bench and it should reset the system and retest what accessory is, is loaded. Now you can go back to the collect panel and on, on this tab is the settings for how we want to collect the, the data. So we can have how many scans we want, the resolution, uh, the format, other parameters down here, and also the background. So currently it's set to collect a background before every sample. We could also collect a background after the sample, or after a specified amount of time, or to use a file where you've saved the background separately. So I'm going to leave it set to before every sample, and we'll leave it with the default four scans. Okay, then to collect the data, you want to click on collect sample. You do not need to collect background if it's set to collect a background before every sample. So we can just click on collect sample and it will tell us to collect the background. So we'll, over here on the instrument before we click OK, we want to make sure it's ready for, for the background. And for that you want to make sure that the stage is clean and the top of the diamond is clean. The diamond can uh, take most any solvent. Uh, only limitations are strong oxidizers and strong acids, so don't use something like sulfuric acid or chromic acid. But then you can use whatever to, uh, that, that is necessary to clean off a uh, prior person's sample and make sure it's, it's ready for your background spectrum. When you're collecting the background, you should not have anything over the diamond. You don't need to have the anvil pressing on the diamond or, or anything covering it. It could just be like this. So we can go back over to the software and we can click OK to collect the background. And it should collect the number of scans that you set for the background. After it finishes collecting the background, it should say prepare to collect the sample spectrum. So now we can go back to the, to the cell. And you can put solid or liquid samples on the diamond here. Um, the diamond is just the small circle in the center here, not the whole area here. It's just, it just looks like a little clear window in the center of, this, of the sample tray here. If you put a liquid, you do not need to use the anvil. You can just take a pipette and put a drop covering the diamond. If your liquid is volatile, you can use this Teflon cover to keep it from evaporating while you collect collect your data. If it's solid, we need to use the anvil to press the sample down into good contact with the diamond. And for a powder, you should use this black tip, which is uh, designed for powders. There are other tips available. They're attached over on the side here for different types of samples. But typically, we're going to use the, the powder tip. So then we can just 
placed a small amount of sample. In this case, we have some aspirin. And we want to cover the surface of the diamond. I'll just dump some on there. Although you can put more on if you want, you really only need a thin layer covering the surface of the diamond. Because only the part that's actually in contact with the surface of the diamond will be detected. And then to make good contact with the surface of the diamond, we use the, the press here. And you turn it until it clicks. And that means that it's pressed down hard enough and that, that ensures that you have a repeatable amount of force pressing down on the sample and on the diamond. Then we can go back here and click OK to collect the sample spectrum. And it should take the number of scans that you've selected. So it's currently doing that. When it's finished, it should bring up a window telling you that you can add the spectrum uh, to, the, to the existing window here. So that will come up in just a second. So here it comes. If you wanted to change the title, you could change the title here. And then you can click OK, and it will add it to the window. Yes. Now, typically, we can uh, process the data offline. So generally, what you want to do is go to File, Save As. And then you can use the file type CSV text and export it to a CSV text file, which you can then uh, process with any sort of uh, data graphing program. When you're finished, you should close Omnic and leave the instrument. You can leave the instrument on and it'll be ready for the next user.